Hey guys, it's Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to talk about the difference between champions and other people. Now, some of this stuff is pretty common sense, but maybe, just maybe, you might be missing one of these key components to see in your true potential. So let's get to it. Lately I've been living like I can't take a loss. They ain't wanna help me, that's what made me a boss. You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the man. We don't give a f that's what they don't understand. I'm back again like flu season, I broke records while I lose leaf and I'm coming now my roof leaving, don't give a f I I don't care. Uh, did the f for my lonesome, no wonder now I'm on one. No shortcuts on that long run, all I really want is my share. I would say for a lot of people, um, these top three things that we're going to talk about today are probably the separating factor to whether you're going to be a champion or not. Now the one big thing that I didn't want to focus on that you really can't change is your genetics. Okay, So if you don't have the genetics to squat world records or you don't have the genetics to play in the NBA or the NFL, you're not going to get there no matter how hard you work. I'm here to tell you right now. I've been around a lot of professional athletes in the last 20 plus years of coaching people and all types of different sports. And I will tell you that the one big thing that separates them from everybody else is just pure God-given genetics, okay? I'm gonna say another thing that you probably won't understand or won't even know, but it's that at least 50% of the NFL don't even train to play football. They are that genetically gifted that they can literally just show up to practice and be that good. Case in point, Bo Jackson, considered by many to be one of the greatest athletes to ever live, never worked out one bit. Now, that's depressing for not only myself and other people based on the fact that you can get that fast, that strong, and that much muscle by literally just being a lazy ass. But at the end of the day, that's just how it is with some people. Now, the people that we idolize, personally myself and others, are people that work very, very hard even if they do have great genetics i.e. Michael Jordan, right? i.e. Um, you're looking at Jerry Rice. You look at a lot of these different guys that really bust their ass to be on top of the league and last a long time. Case in point, look how long Bo, Bo Jackson lasted. Not very long. Now, some people are going to slip through the cracks and be able to have 10 and 15 year careers in the NFL or NBA or another sport without training very hard, but in, in reality, most people that really put the work in in the offseason tend to stay in the league and stay on top of the league for much, much longer, okay? So with genetics out of the way, I'm going to focus on the three major things that I think are not only changeable, but help everyone. <clears throat> the first part is to set your priorities correctly. If you're trying to be a champion in anything, it's going to take a lot of focus. This means that I'll give you an example. When I was in college, okay, when everybody was partying, all I was doing was going to school, trying to get the best grades I could get, training, sleeping, and working. That was it. I had no weekends off. That's when I was working as a welder at the hospital to pay for school. And during the weekdays and even the weekends when I'd get off work, I would train. And then all of my extra time was focused on recovering, sleeping, and eating correctly. Now, that particular time, eating correctly was a little different than it is now, but the point is I was trying to push in as many calories as I could because I was moving a lot throughout the day, walking to class, you know, the, the um, cognitive energy that you're burning in very high level courses, and then also carrying heavy steel and welding all weekend, I was still able to break multiple American records and be able to be one of the greatest lifters of my generation at that time. The point is though, it was my priorities were perfectly set. By having a very uh, hard manual labor job, going to very, very difficult biomechanical classes, and then also helping out in the weight room, it did not leave any extra energy or time for messing around. This is where my priorities really got dialed in in my early 20s that have kept me on that particular scheme my entire life, which is why we've been so successful at winning strength. The next big thing is, and it kind of ties into priorities, is having a 24-hour focus. So for a lot of us, especially younger kids, we think that if we just put our time and effort into the gym, that we're going to see the results we want to see. That is only partially true. If you were to take a look at some of the top people in the world, including myself, 
what you're going to find is that training is only a portion of what it takes to be good. What it really takes to be good is quality sleep, which is why we promote Charlotte's Web and the CBD products to enhance sleep performance, which is also why we promote and enhance ATP Labs, because it's very, very hard, especially these days with all the processed foods, to get the proper nutrients and small minerals and things of that nature that you need on a consistent basis when you're constantly damaging tissue and pushing your body to the limits. Um, the 24-hour focus, in my opinion, the most important thing of what we all talked about in this particular scenario is sleep. Your sleep has to be not only be very high quality, it has to be, in my opinion, at the right time. You will find me in bed around anywhere from 8.30 to 9.30 at night and I'm not getting out of bed unless it's my one insanely busy day, I'm at least in bed until 6 a.m. That is a nine hour night of sleep, literally every day, just to sustain the body mass and strength that I have at 42 going on 43 years old. So the thing of it is with the 24 hour focus is that becomes more and more important as you age. So for you anti-aging people, I would say 35 and above, what you guys are gonna to have to start understanding is that your sleep priority should be one of your number one priorities as far as anti-aging. You can have the best training protocol, you can have the best diet. If you have shitty sleep, all of it's not necessarily wasted, but it's not nearly as optimal. And the last thing that I think is the most important and the biggest difference between champions and others is consistent learning. If you notice, a lot of people that get really good at something ha tend to have multiple high-level mentors. I'll give you myself as an example. You know, the last four or five years that Charles Pollock, when we were alive, we were really tight. He won 20-plus gold medals in different sports with different athletes uh, as their strength coach. He was one of the head strength coaches of Team Canada and Team USA at multiple different spans of his career. And what I started to realize is that people that are very good, they can't always do it themselves. They tend to need other people that are mentors. Again, we don't live long enough to be masters at everything. And I think that's the hardest part with strength conditioning or being a good personal trainer is that we need to know about nutrition, we need to know about recovery, we need to know about things in the gym as far as technique and volume parameters and things of that nature. It took me 20 years to be a, I consider myself a master in volume and intensities. And it took me 20 years to understand that. So I would say it takes another 20 years to truly understand nutrition and probably another 20 years to truly understand recovery. That's 60 years. That means that none of us really are around long enough to truly understand all of the aspects of training. And that's why you need to go to people that have a lot of education in those particular areas. My particular area when I was younger and thought it, you know, the sun set and rose on it was volume, intensity, parameters, and technique. So that's what I focused on a lot. Then I found that the piece of the pies that I was missing were my recovery abilities and my nutritional abilities. So who do I go talk to? I go talk to Stan Efforting, Charles Poliquin, and a handful of other people. Why? They're better at it than I was at that time. So the point is, is that if your circle of people that you're hanging out with, look around and see who is doing successful things around you. And if the answer is not very many, you're gonna have a very, very hard time being the best you can be. So I hope this starts to get you to understand some things and to reiterate, you need to have your priorities straight. You need to be looking at everything in a 24 hour focus and you need to be consistently learning and surrounding yourself with people that know more than you. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So please come to winningstrength.com, check out our manuals, our online coaching, Patreon, and Train Heroic for an ability to get way better, way faster, with way less mileage, and much more performance. Talk to you guys later and see you soon. Lately I've been living like I can't take a loss.